again is Deborah Ab Abkamethi, who is the governor of Edinburgh Prison and who has taken a leading role in making happen what has happened this week. David. I suppose I knew it was going to be tough, just tough, uh, but then following James and, and Ian, I suppose that just reinforces exactly what I'm saying in the first slide here, and I think there's quite a lot of people in the room probably think, <laughs> think of prisons as the problem, or part of the problem rather than part of the solution, so I don't know, does pantomime translate to the US? Is there such a thing as pantomime? So, so there you go, I'm kind of like a major domo or whatever. You've got Buttons and Prince Charming sitting right there. And, and, and I know, I mean, we just came from a, a, a kind of very serious bit of Ian's talk there, and, and I'm sure a few tears were shed. So I'm sorry for being a bit frivolous. Um, but I, I don't doubt there are people in the room who see us as part of the problem rather than part of the solution. And what I can say, first, I wouldn't describe myself as a an abolitionist. Here goes Jerry. I think I'm, I'm happy to be called a partial abolitionist. So. Um, and, and I'm not alone. There's a lot of prison people here and we know what we're doing could be a lot better. Um, and we're part of a whole systems change that needs to take place in this country but we want to be part of the solution and we know we're slow but um, please bear with us. So, I've been in the prison service for a fair amount of time, uh, 36 years, 86 to 2022, the, the, the prison system has changed a lot in this country and if anybody's heard me talk before, they'll, they'll have heard me say about things like the walls are as much, in the olden days the, old, the walls were as much to keep the inside, the outside world out as much as they were to keep the inside world in, but that's become porous. Over time I've worked in six different prisons, I've worked in headquarters in the college, and I was four years an inspector with the chief inspector of prisons, so I think as much as, as anybody who's worked in prisons, I've got a reasonable perspective on, on what's happened since 1986 to 2022. We've got lots of policy changes. When I came into the service, we talked about custody and care, and COCO was the kind of mantra, and then we moved on to opportunity and responsibility, introduced complaint systems and those different things. And until 10 years ago, we came up with unlocking potential transforming lives, and there's lots of aspects of that to a high level are um, representative of how our, our thinking has evolved. And obviously, we're an agency of the Scottish Government, so it aligns itself to the strategy. But there are things that get in the way of what we're trying to do, and things that get in the way of the aspirations that we might have, and obviously, things that are going to get in the way of what we're talking about today. And that's a wee bit of kind of elephant in the room, I suppose, that, that it's my responsibility to throw up the table. So there are things in the way, so these things are serious organised crime and other things. There are things like personality disorder, risk aversion, running a safe and orderly prison and a focus on risk and defensible decisions that, 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 I, that I carry and that the prison staff carry. There's, you know, James, I think, talked about smart justice, but there's loads of stuff in the media about soft justice, so we, we have to be mindful of that, and particularly since 1999, when, when justice moved from a thing in Westminster, miles and miles away, to about two miles from where I work in Hollywood. So there's much more interest in what goes on in prisons nowadays than there was then, and that, that creates pressures, pressures for us to operate in certain ways. And the other thing that gets in the way, and, and, and it's just bricks and mortar, but the architecture of our prisons. Many are not fit for purpose, but the guys in the corner here are going to get a brand new old sign all dance in HMP Glasgow by 2026. And we're building a new HMP Highland up in Inverness, and hopefully the people that are designing and building those prisons will, will have in mind some of the things that we've heard about today, and they build something that's more fit for purpose for what we're trying to achieve. So that's, that's kind of, that's a wing in Edinburgh, I guess. Esque. Um, we've got 24 wings just like that, and you know, you could mistake that for a warehouse, let's be honest. Uh, but that's where the primary interaction between residents and residents and staff and residents takes place. And again, like other big institutions, we've got long corridors and galvanised steel walls, and it feels very much like a, an institution, even if you put a lick of paint to change it away from the kind of the grey stuff that the builder left. 
then you, this is the female wing, Rathlow, and, and some of the, the, the women from Rathlow were, were with Fritzy and, and, and the Cisco team and the Tigers team Monday, Tuesday this week, and oh my God. Uh, so the two of the three households uh, you can see there are, there are representatives of the, the groups that were there, but again you see it's very much a kind of institutional type environment, and, but that's what we've got. <coughs> So I suppose in preparation for this I started to ask, but what if? And, and, and this is my reality and I totally accept that, that, that I've never spent a night in prison as a resident. Um, I've talked to loads of people, uh, I've met thousands and thousands of people, I've met people inside prison doing sentences and subsequently in communities and um, people have told me stories, but, but this is not my experience, but this is, this is my reality if you like. And what I've found in, in my 36 years is that we had loads of trouble in prisons in the 1980s and 90s and that was on the margins because by and large the relationships between the staff and the residents, we've talked a lot today about trust and respect, but I can say that I, I'm aware of trust, trusting and respectful relationships that I've seen between residents and residents and between staff and residents. And not every officer and not every resident, but those do exist. The primary example of that was the, the creation of the True Care Support Role, and, and some of you might be aware of that, but that was something that we created for around five years. I was fortunate enough to experience it when I was the Governor at Low Moss and then subsequently in Edinburgh, but we, we stopped doing it a couple of years ago and we need to replace it with something in my humble opinion. As we emerged from the pandemic, we've, we've spoke to people in Edinburgh, the residents and the staff, about what they want to keep, what they want to go back to, what they'd never like to do again. We asked and, and people talked about control and safety and about freedom and vulnerability and they talked about our duty of care. And lots of things conflict and lots of things are difficult to reconcile in those worlds. So, you know, it's like that, that whole thing has got a hard shell, but it's got a soft centre. And I talk about that in the context of the whole prison, the whole estate, but also each individual within it. But the other side of that same coin is that all of the people that we've talked about in the context of victims, who have suffered trauma, who have experienced trauma, have experienced adverse childhood experiences, we have to manage them as predators as well. And we have that conflicting role in that you know, we have to hold people to account, we have to try and get people to obey the rules um, and at the same time try and formulate in our head a way in which we can do that with the compassion and love that, that, that others have spoken about. So that, that's going to be a challenge for us because it's counterintuitive to the kind of established boundaries that exist between residents and staff in prison. So we're not asking prison officers an easy thing to do. Um, and, you know, but thankfully we've got amazing people who have, have already started to step into that space. So the other conflicting thing, I suppose, about prisons is that we, we talk about we're trying to manage people as individuals, but in, a, in the context of a big institution that's almost impossible. So, the routine dominates and the routine in prisons is something that, that dictates everything else and it actually flies in the face of all of the, the kind of personal things. A proper conversation is difficult because the medication has to be issued, because the meals are having to be issued, because it's lock up time, because the staff have to be for meals, so it's that kind of big machine thing that gets in the way as well, so that's going to be a challenge for us as well. And the real challenge, I suppose, in the context of what we're talking about is to free up the system without making it a free-for-all, you know, creating an environment whereby serious organised crime predators can dominate without there being any kind of, kind of control. So, and, but not having such a controlled system that compassion and relationships can emerge and develop in the way that, that we would like. But we've started because it, it is quite different. You know, the role that a prison officer does now compared to the role that I did as an officer in the 80s is completely different. And what we ask prison staff to do is an amazing it's an amazing thing. But as I say, we're lucky that we've got some amazing people. <laughs> so this is this is a more kind of I don't know, normal environment. It certainly wouldn't have been an environment I would have experienced as an officer. That's our recovery cafe where the the Compassion Prison Project were working with the residents of Rafu on Monday, Tuesday this week. So there you've got a prison officer with some guys from Ingolston sitting chatting about you know things around addiction, um, things around employability and we're hoping that this kind of environment will become more regular because it, it just makes it more possible for proper conversations and proper relationships to be developed 
and I hope that this will develop in the the new estate and we've got a new HAP Stirling coming along this year and we've got new community custody units in Dundee and in Glasgow, that those will be environments that are more, um, more you know, kind of, if you like, it's more possible to do that, that kind of work. <coughs> and what if again, so brioche is a vision <coughs> statement, belief, respect, integrity, openness, courage, but the most important one in the context of this is humility. And humility on our, our part means that we have to realise that we can't do this on our own and we need to work with people and we need to work with a range of people who are going to come in and we're, we're great in that we've got loads of people. I get emails every day of people who want to come and help. I get letters, I get you know, phone calls, loads of people want to come and help and it's great to be able to say yes. And I don't want to differentiate, I don't want to kind of create any kind of competition. We need to work with professional, qualified practitioners, we need to work with experts, we need to work with people who have the experience. We need to work with everybody, we need to work with everybody that's going to help us. And we're talking about recovery, not just in terms of, of addiction, we're talking about whole person recovery, which I think what, what James and Ian have described already. So that, that's the kind of philosophical starting point for us to, to look at that. And um, it's great already that we've got some fantastic partners and some of them are represented here today. We've got a couple of people who are clinical psychologists from uh, NHS who work in the prison here. And, and their boss, Susie Black, has been great in terms of developing a trauma-informed prison strategy. And she's one of the NHS Education Scotland trainers that the Minister alluded to earlier on. We've got Change Rule Live, we've got the Scottish Recovery Consortium. I think Rod from Recovery Coaching Scotland's here as well. Sycamore Tree, Hidden Voices, and Jerry's here. Bernardo's, HMCIP, they all have Aidan a bit have been mentioned. All the ACAA, AGANA, the whole lot come into the prison zone. And more and more and more, so it's great, it's great that people are sticking their hand up because collaboration is the way forward for us. And, and you know, as, I, as I said at the beginning, the walls used to be very fixed. You know, the people were not allowed in and what happened inside the walls is secret only for us to know. And so that, that's changed. But it can be a competition, so we need to work together, it needs to be collaborative. Because if we turn it into a competition about our way is better than their way and you shouldn't work with them because you're working with us, then we all lose. We all lose if that's it. We have to try and be, if you like, the the lubricant that keeps it all together. So can you use lubricant as that? <laughs> <laughs> so partners are more and more involved. And there again, so this is this is a sycamore tree session on restorative justice in Edinburgh that's happened in the last couple of weeks, just as an example of that. I'm kind of chasing the truth here because I'm between you and lunch, eh? So, <laughs> so I stole this from Adam Burley. Um, I don't know if um, Adam would be known to some of you from Community Justice Scott. I don't think he's here today. If he is, sorry, Adam. He probably stole it to somebody else anyway. <laughs> it's relationship, relationships are as important as believing. So I've got a, a flip chart in the corner of my office, and if somebody says something profound, so hurt people, hurt people's on my, on my sheet, James, because I heard you say it on something. So I've got that one, and I've got relationships are as important as breathing. I've got Icky Guy up there. Everybody in this room has found their icky guy. So I'll just leave that with you. I-K-I-G-A-I. Does anybody know what icky guy means? Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so it's relationships are the foundations. My personal view, I think we've got some good relationships. It's not perfect. We've got some good relationships among staff and residents. I think we've got some good relationships between residents and residents. But we need to build on that big time. We've got a lot of work to do. But if, if those relationship, relationships can be nurtured, then that's the foundations of which a, a new system and a system much more akin to what we've talked about today could be possible. But I suppose the last plea from me is be patient with us, be gentle. Um, we've got constraints, we have to operate within the rules and all these things and budgets and all these boring things. But honestly, if you walk around the prisons, you know, speak to Mr. Stoney and his team and Berlin, and thanks to them for stepping up. You know, um, boy, I know boys is here today, so he was there at the first meeting. So, so it would have been easy, it's dead easy as a prison governor to say, "What? You want us to do that? Not a chance." So, so uh, Fraser, uh, Addy, Will, and Michael at uh, Berlin, thanks for standing alongside us and being the kind of the first ones to dip, to, dip their toe in the water. Thank you.